If you're a music artist, I'm guessing at some point you've released music and you just expected more from it. It's a really great song. You did all the promotion, it was excellent. You just feel like more people should have heard it. What's the problem? My name is Craig Honeyset. I'm a producer and I've worked with so, so many artists in that exact same position. And what I've found the difference to be is genuine audience engagement. So in this video, we're gonna kind of unpack what that means. What's the difference between 200 and 20,000 streams? What's, what's the difference in the promotion, in the marketing, in the messaging between those two things? And those numbers might be different from you, but we're gonna look at, we're gonna do a deep dive into genuine audience engagement and how you can unlock that for your music and start to get true, real, and more engaging fans. I'm gonna explain this concept using three main points. First, the pitfall of trying to appeal to the masses. Second, the power of connecting to a select few. And third, crafting heartfelt and honest music. I think something that we fall into is comparing ourselves to the people that are really successful and then whether you mean to or not, kind of emulating what they do. So we can look at huge artists like uh, Morgan Wallen, Taylor Swift, Ed Sheeran. We look at those those big artists and think they have such broad audiences, right? Or maybe it's someone within your niche. Maybe you're into the rock niche. So maybe it's like the Foo Fighters. They're at the top of their game and so many people love the Foo Fighters. Like every household is going to know that name. So we think our audience is kind of everyone. So a mistake that we fall into really early is we're a small artist, we're an independent artist, we're growing and we want to kind of get into the same lounge rooms that the Foo Fighters are in. So we appeal to everyone. This becomes a real pressure on us as an artist when we're releasing music, when we're writing music, when we're promoting music to think, what can I say that everyone's going to like? What sort of material can I put out that they like, they like, they like, everyone likes it. Someone who has never heard of me before is going to like this. So we put a lot of pressure on ourselves as music artists promoting, thinking that we have to appeal to the masses. I think what this often does is actually diminishes our authenticity, right? So, I mean, the Foo Fighters are super authentic to who they are. You can kind of, you could describe them in a short paragraph. You could describe Ed Sheeran in a small paragraph, but he has appealed to the masses. But when we don't have that following, we don't have that audience, the only way we can appeal to the masses is kind of by watering down everything that we stand for, right? Our songs are about falling in love, right? So we we try to cover all the bases, everything to do with falling in love, that person who's falling in love, that person who's falling in love, that person. We kind of broaden it right out so that everyone who is anywhere near that topic might appreciate it. What this is, is a lack of authenticity because you are aware of one aspect of that, right? So maybe your song can be about one aspect of falling in love or one moment that you did or a specific moment. And we get scared to narrow it down to that specific thing that is actually authentic to us. Instead, we look out and say, they're broad, I need to be broad. Just imagine your own body just being stretched to kind of appeal to everyone. It's going to get really thin and be a distortion of who you really are. So it's the same with our music. You've got this song and you've got three minutes 30. And if you've just kind of tried to stretch that so that, that reaches every single person, it's really thin and wavery. And I think that's the biggest problem when it comes to us releasing our music. We've got this thing that isn't firm. It's not, it hasn't, it's not standing in its own place. It's kind of a little bit of everywhere. So it doesn't have enough strength to hold up. When we've got a crowded market on Spotify, so we've got 100,000 songs about love. If yours is broad, if your marketing is broad, if you're like, oh, I do this thing that everyone's going to like, not many people are going to be able to grab onto that because of the competition in the market. Everyone's looking for something what they're, going to, what they're going to be finding, and I've found this to be true, is a thing that talks specifically. So that takes us into point two, the power of connecting to a select few. Hey, sorry, I'm just gonna interrupt my own video for a second to show you something that I reckon will really help you out. If you're tired of feeling overwhelmed every time you sit down to write songs, then I wanna introduce you to From Singer to Songwriter, the ultimate solution to help you transform your songwriting. Learn every aspect of songwriting from the initial idea to the completed record ready masterpiece. No more starting songs without finishing, struggling for ideas or writing boring tunes. And you can say goodbye to not having time to write. I'll guide you through the songwriting concepts and then show you how to apply these techniques by writing a song together from scratch. Then give you time to practice what you've learned and begin building that songwriting muscle. In fact, the song that we write together in this course went on to be professionally recorded and released and is doing really well. Turn your struggles into successes and join our free songwriting workshop on YouTube. Don't miss out. Click the link below to start your journey. 
from singer to songwriter, transform your songwriting, unleash your creativity, and write songs you're proud of. Now, I've worked with a ton of artists who are in that sort of first category where they are trying to just, let's, I want to find myself, I want to be famous, I'm going to chuck this out there. What's really opened my eyes about this is I've, I've been working with this artist who, who is not chasing music full time. He's got a great job, he's a teacher, he's really, really good at it, but he's got a passion for music and he's written these really good songs. Now, he's got people in his mind that he knows will really, really appreciate his music. He's written about specific things and he can think of those people and know who this song is going to appeal to before it's even been released, right? So what he has done is just thought about that select few and and made a stand on his music and his marketing just to be for those people. Now, honestly, in his mind, he doesn't care if nobody else listens to it. If he can make a genuine connection with the people that he's got in his mind and that he knows will connect with those feelings, if they love the song, that's a win for him. So let me tell you something really interesting that has happened. So this is the guy I'm talking about who's done barely any promotion, but all his promotion has been really, really targeted to these specific people that he knows will connect with the song. What's happened is his music has exploded. So he's got 20,000 streams for barely any promotion, as opposed to the 200 streams people with tons of promotion, right? So the difference is he has a select few. So in the crowd of all the music, you've got this really strong, uh, defined piece of music, this defined story, defined marketing that appeals to a certain person. So because these people are real people that he's kind of promoting to, it's an actual person, what happens is algorithms can find that type of person and then replicate that, right? So algorithms, have you noticed whenever you're on Instagram, YouTube shorts, TikTok, if you watch a video for 50 seconds, you like it, and then you swipe on the next one, you notice that it starts to put more things in there, right? So once I uh, I watched this alien conspiracy thing, I thought I was, I was just a bit interested I don't know why. I just, I watched too much of it. Anyway, next time I opened up that app, there's just so much alien stuff. So what it, what the algorithm did is decided, oh, this is the kind of guy that is into conspiracies. I'm not, I'm really not. But it drove me crazy seeing all that. But what happened is they kind of grabbed me, they profiled me thinking, yes, he's into this. And then they put that in front of me. So the only way they could do that is because that alien video was really, really clear on what it was about, right? So it wasn't about a little bit about aliens, a little bit about that conspiracy, a little bit about this, a little bit about that. It wasn't a broad thing. It was very specific to this dude believing that he'd seen an alien, right? So because that was so specific, it's very easy to find other people that like that very specific thing and put it in front of them. And it works because the next person that it put in front of technically should should like it, right? That's how the algorithm works. So if you've got music that's doing that, like a genuine connection with music that's actually uh, moving someone emotionally, having that genuine connection and they listen to it three or four times because it just, it moves them, they love it. They can put it in front of a hundred other people that they know, that the algorithm knows, whether that's Spotify, YouTube, whatever it is, they know that person also likes that kind of music and that works. What you cannot do is grab a really broad, everyone's going to like this song and profile other people that are also like everyone because we're all so different. So what's so amazing about this artist is that he's just blown away. You know, he messages me often saying, oh, we're up to this many streams, up to this many streams. And he can't kind of believe it. He doesn't, he's not chasing it. He still is genuine about who he's wanting to connect with. So the fact that his music did connect with the people he wanted it to is a complete win for him. He does not need any more. If it just stopped and he never got another stream on that, he'd be completely happy. It brings us on to point three. It really is about the music. His heartfelt lyrics, his genuine love for this song and for the emotion is what people connect with. There's no underlining tone of, please like this, please share this. I want to be famous. This is my dream. This is my passion. Too often we kind of chuck out all our songs, appeal to everyone and say, come on, feed me. I need this. I need you to like this for me. There's kind of always this underlying tone of why you're actually putting out music. But if you can flip that and the reason you put out music is because it's actual heartfelt music, it's actual honest, true music to who you are, you're trying to help a specific person with that specific song then that just works. In this world of clutter and chaos that's going on, 
everyone just trying to get these viral videos, the thing that stands up above all of them is truth, honesty, and connection. It really is. Like they're the things that are going to win in the end because as humans at the moment, we are just craving that real thing. What's real? What's actual? And your music needs to be exactly the same. You're going to, you're going to go beyond the masses if you can appeal to a real person. What I'd do to make this happen. This is the thing that my mate did here. This is what you should do. Think of two, three, five people max that you think would appreciate your music, your latest song. Who does that speak to? Who's someone that's gone through what you're talking about in this song that will connect with the emotion? And then every single bit of promotion that you do, and I think you should do lots. You should be doing, you know, 10 reels here, put out your promotion, all the things like drip feed it out. But all you really want to do is make sure that those three to five people, only those three to five people will engage with it. Write your promotions in such a way that they will go, oh man, thank you. That really spoke to me. That really, I needed to hear that today. Something like that. If you can think of those people, then all of a sudden the algorithm on those platforms are going to find another 500 people like those five people. And that might mean that you can think of three or four other friends that really don't like it. They won't like it. It won't appeal to them. They will swipe straight past it. You have to be okay with that. That's the only way you can do it because again, all of a sudden, Spotify and everyone else is not going to put it in front of the people that are going to swipe past it, which means that you're getting way more bang for your buck. The people that it is putting in front of are the people that want to like it. So you've now got a profile sorted out. You've figured out who does like it and who doesn't like it. And then the algorithm can work for you. That's how this whole thing works. So we need to be, we need to, number one, stop appealing to the masses. Number two, create a genuine connection with an actual real person. And three, Make sure our music is real, it is heartfelt, and it does come from a place of your authentic heart so that you can put it out authentically and people can genuinely connect with you. The name of the artist I've been referencing throughout this video is Austin Logan. I've put a link to some of his music down below. He's just released some new videos and things uh, here on YouTube. So make sure you check that out and just follow him if you like, actually, because his journey is fascinating. He will show you all the things I've been talking about and how to make genuine connection I think he's the master at it, hence I did this video kind of referencing everything about him. If you're into songwriting, you want to get better at your songwriting, I have a free songwriting workshop right here that's going to take you from start to finish writing a song and help you write more songs more effectively.